Welcome back to One on One, you dirty dogs, the most in-depth football show on YouTube. Now, the Ballon d'Or returns this year after its 2020 hiatus, with France football recently announcing its 30-man shortlist. The last recipient was one Lionel Messi in 2019, when he bested Virgil van Dijk by a mere seven votes. And despite this year looking just as close, Messi remains the bookies' favourite. Now, if the Argentine was to win, it would be his seventh Ballon d'Or in total, two ahead of arch-rival Cristiano Ronaldo. But before we delve into the other 29 contestants, a quick Ballon d'Or crash course to bring you up to speed. Number one, the award is based on a player's exploits within a calendar year. Number two, the votes are cast through France football by a leading broadcaster or journalist from each of the 176 voting nations, who will all pick their top five from the 30-man shortlist. And finally, here is the voting criteria. And listen up, because I think it's widely misunderstood. The judges will consider both individual and collective performance. They must also consider player class, which is talent and fair play. In certain circumstances, a player's career will also be taken into consideration, which kind of conflicts with the calendar year idea, but so be it. Now we're all on the same page, let's pick ourselves a winner. Not waiting until the 29th of November to do this. And to speed up proceedings, I'm gonna ax 15 names straight away. We're busy people. Who has time to discuss 30 candidates? Not me. I'll tell you what you do have time for. Time to like this video and subscribe to the channel with notifications on. And if we hit 1500, I will get intergalactic referee slash global sex symbol Jonathan Babb to introduce next week's show. That's right, John Babb calling you all dirty dogs. Doesn't sound like something you want to miss out on. Le Chop. Let's do this by position so it doesn't get too chaotic. Starting with defenders, we have Benucci, Chiellini, Simon Kier, and Azpilicueta. Now in this group, we have two European Championship winners, a Champions League winning captain, and Simon Kier, the living embodiment of a Viking. All good players deserving of their place in the top 30. However, unlike many of their counterparts, they did not perform for their clubs and country this calendar year in equal measure. Benucci and Chiellini, for example, were integral to Italy's Euro 2020 triumph. However, none of them put up over 24 league starts as Juventus limped to a fourth place finish in Serie A. Now, although Simon Kier's club form for AC Milan was solid as they returned to the Champions League for the first time in umpteen years, He's clearly got onto the shortlist via the fair play route after demonstrating incredible leadership in the face of an unprecedented crisis. And we shouldn't scoff at that. Have we become so obsessed with goals and assists that we can't place great value on something like that? And as P won the Champions League with Chelsea and fought his way back into the Spain setup after a two year absence, but he did miss a third of the domestic campaign with niggling injuries. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who identifies him as the world-class player in his position. Any complaints? Let me know in the comments, you hounds. On to the midfielders. Slightly more controversial, I am chopping Foden, Bruno Fernandes, Pedri, Modric and Mason Mount. And it's probably Mount who is the most unfortunate to be called out of that batch of names considering he won the Champions League and was his club's most dependable player in domestic play. Not to mention very consistent for England at the Euros until the final. Let's not talk about it. Foden, by comparison, started roughly half of Manchester City's Premier League games while only featuring twice for the three Lions. Despite wunderkid Pedri winning young player of said tournament, his credentials probably a little bit light to break into the top 15 this time round. Although I would like to present him with the inaugural Iron Lung Trophy for being f***ing run into the ground by club and country. The Spaniard played 73 matches in the course of a season, the most of any European player. Let's stop lionising that and make sure that UEFA and FIFA actually show a greater degree of care to their players. Insert disapproving Marge Simpson noise. But to be fair, Pedri's Copa del Rey was one more trophy than Bruno Fernandes or Luka Modric won, who are also getting chopped. Fernandes does deserve special praise for keeping Oli in a job with 30 goal involvements in 35 Premier League starts. Although the Portuguese maestro did begin to visibly tire after January. I think it was just 12 goals and assists following the winter window, perhaps why he only started two games at the Euros. On to the forwards slash wingers. Again, very tough, but here's who I'm chopping. Mares, Kane, Sterling, Martinez, Neymar, Gerard Moreno. Now everyone on that list, bar Neymar and 
Kane were league title winners last season. So it's getting really bloody tough. I mean, Kane was a golden boot winner as well when Neymar won a couple cups, but meh. You know what? The cold player that I feel most for there, Gerard Moreno. 40 goals and assists in 40 league and Europa League games, and he won the latter. Mahrez only started 23 league games and contributed to five fewer goals than last season, and Sterling's goals and assists have declined for a third year on the bounce. Kane also lost two finals and is now playing like the most pissed off man in the Premier League. Do you agree or disagree with the initial 15 players that we've called? Let me know in the comments below. Top 15. At 15, I've got Haaland. In 2021, Haaland pretty much picked up where he left off in 2020, scoring with a robot-like efficiency. I think he's on 41 and counting at the time of writing for club and country. Now, obviously, his lack of domestic silverware and success on the international stage has bumped him down a few places, but his talent is truly remarkable and he's quickly becoming undeniable. At number 14, Kylian Mbappe. Can't be too high given that PSG lost a supposed one-horse race to Lille. But Le Parisien striker has scored 35 goals for club and country in this calendar year at the time of writing. Pretty bloody bien. And that included statement goals in big games like that hat-trick against Barcelona and the double against Bayern Munich. Also experienced a small redemption arc for being pretty crap at the Euros by scoring in the semi-final and final of the Nations League. I'm quite puzzled as to how much weight people are going to give that tournament. Because for me, not so much. Number 13, Ruben Diaz. And I know what you're thinking. How can Ruben Diaz be above Haaland and Mbappe? Well, here's how. In his first season at the Etihad, the Portuguese didn't just win the Premier League. He won every individual accolade going. He won his club's player of the season. He won Premier League player of the year. He won football writer's player of the year. The first defender to win the latter in the Premier League era. And it's not hard to see why. With Diaz and Stones holding it down at the back, City won 15 consecutive Premier League games. A run in which they only conceded five goals. And of course, the club also got to its first Champions League final in its history. Plus, he's now captain, all in just over 12 months. Does not f*** about that, man. At 12, I've gone for Gigi Donnarumma. I think what that guy is doing in the net at 22 is, quite frankly, ridiculous. Already has six senior campaigns to his name, and his save percentage has only dropped below 70% once. He was also formidable in goal at the Euros. So much so, he was crowned player of the tournament. At number 11, Nicolò Barella. I can sense a few open mouths at this one, but Barella was a mainstay in the middle of the park in a trophy laden 2021 for club and country. He only missed two league games for Inter as the Nerazzurri regained the Scudetto for the first time in well over a decade and made seven appearances for Italy at the Euros finals. At number 10, I've gone Mo Salah. Didn't win a fucking thing, but he's outrageous. This is one of the instances where sheer ability has just propelled him up the list. Given he's notched up 23 goals at club level in 2021 alone, I feel like he deserves something. We're now at a point where he's being regarded as the best winger in Premier League history. Jamie Carragher also including him in his all-time Liverpool 11. And he's added credence to all this by racking up nine goal involvements in his first seven Premier League starts this season. At number nine, Ronaldo. Now the Portuguese superstar did miss out on the Serie A title, but still hit 29 goals for the old lady. This was the highest in the division, securing him his first Capon Caniniere award for top goal scorer, while he also lifted the Coppa Italia too. The 36-year-old also won the Golden Boot at Euro 2020, despite Portugal being knocked out in the first knockout round. And additionally, he became the all-time top goal scorer at international level. Tell you what, if he can land Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a trophy, he might just be back in contention for the top gong this time next year. At number eight, KDB. 18 goal contributions in just 23 league starts, a league and cup double, put up the most goal contributions as the citizens made their way to the Champions League final. Belgium were also shite when he wasn't on the pitch at the Euros, underpinning his importance to Martinez's side. Simply put, fitness has cost him a place in the top five. Number seven, Luis Suarez. Now, come the end of the season, Suarez wasn't even in the power rankings. This was despite racking up 24 goal contributions in just 30 La Liga starts as Atleti won their first title since the 2013-14 season. Atleti's next top goal scorer after the Uruguayan was midfielder Marcus Llorente on 12. And Atletico and Real Madrid top of La Liga at the time of writing. And guess who's averaging 0.94 goal contributions per game? El Pistolero. At number six, I'm going Benzema. Now, hasn't won a major trophy since La Liga in 2019-20, unless we're counting the Nations League. 
which I'm not. However, Benzema currently leads Europe's major leagues for goals and assists since the start of last season. That's 40 goals and 16 assists. If I'm going to give Messi credit for carrying a poor Barcelona side, we have to give Benz the same credit when it comes to Real Madrid. He's also enjoyed a really productive turn to the international setup, scoring five goals in his last 10 games for Le Bleu. Number five, N'Golo Kante. Now, arguably, last season, Kante was probably the match winner in some of the highest caliber games. I'm talking about both legs against Real Madrid and that final against City where he was just incredible. Hence why he won the gong for Champions League midfielder of the season. However, didn't have the best Euros campaign and only made 24 starts for Chelsea in domestic play. In fact, he's only started 46 of the available 83 Premier League games since the start of the 2019-20 campaign. Still, probably Chelsea's most important player when fit, right? Number four, Big Rom. 35 goals and assists in 32 starts last season. Ridiculous. Not to mention he became the first Belgian to reach double figures for goals at major international finals after scoring four in five appearances at the Euros. Pretty unsurprising given that he's been involved in 33 goals in his last 26 games at international level. It's ridiculous. His first eight league and Champions League games at Chelsea following his £100 million switch in the summer has yielded Four goals so far, a slow start by his standards. But this is a man at the top of his game and that is well capable of delivering Chelsea the title. Number three, I've got Lewandowski. Now, will France football just admit they f***ed up and give him the 2020 Ballon d'Or retrospectively? Get him out on stage with the eventual winner of this trophy. It will be lovely. It will be glorious. It will be heartwarming. Exactly what we need after a tough two years. Imagine Lever on TikTok after that. Buzzing. He scored 47 goals that season and spearheaded Bayern to a European treble. I'm not sure he'll ever be more worthy than that. Despite the fact he broke Gerd Müller's goal scoring record in the most recent campaign in crazy fashion, I think just 28 games it took him. But given the lack of competition in the Bundesliga, goals just isn't enough. You could argue that if Chupa Moting started all those games with that level of service, he'd probably score 10 to 15 goals and Bayern would still win the league title. Bayern also crashed out of the Pacao in the second round and the Champions League in the quarterfinals. And while his three goals in three games for Poland was highly respectable at the Euros, he needed a fairy tale once Messi won the Copa America. I'm sorry, that's my choice. Number two, Jorginho. Now, the fact he played a key role in the Champions League victory and the Euros campaign makes him an automatic contender, doesn't it? Do I think either nation could have done it without him? I mean, Italy had Verratti on the bench at the Euros. Chelsea don't really have anyone else of that mould, I guess. This is a case of form, not ability. His form was incredible. At the Euros, for example, most ball recoveries, won the most fouls, set the records for the most interceptions. He became Mancini's main man. And Tuchel's also gone on the record to say that he should win it. I mean, he's not going to say otherwise, is he? Now, it would be refreshing to see a player with his skill set win an individual accolade because he enables the rest of the team to be better, doesn't he? He's a conduit. But he's already won the award that he should win, and that is UEFA's Men's Player of the Year because it was in their competitions that he absolutely smacked it. Whereas domestically speaking, much less important. But while talent is still one of the main criteria, how can anyone else be crowned other than this man? Number one, Lionel Messi. Now, had he not won the Copa America, Argentina's first major bit of silverware since 1993, he might have come up short, but he did and in some style. Not only was he player of the tournament with nine goal contributions, but he also set a new record for caps for Argentina during the tournament, taking over former teammate Javier Mascherano. And domestically, he may have only finished with the Copa del Rey, but definitely saved Barcelona the ignominy of finishing below Sevilla. At 34, he racked up over 3,000 league minutes, the most he's put up since 2014-15, bagging an astonishing 39 goals and assists. The 30 goals he scored in domestic play worked out at around 0.85 per game and secured him yet another Pachichi trophy for the league's top goalscorer. In fact, it was his eighth overall, which is of course a record, and fifth in a row. In the 2021 season, he also overtook Xavi Hernandez as Barcelona's most capped player and 
beat Pele's record for most goals for one club. That was 643. That's what he says anyway. I think while the guy's breathing, he's probably going to be in the top three every year. That was my top 15. I want your top 15 in the comments below. Let's get some healthy debate going. And that is also one-on-one -on -one for another week. Hit me up with your ideas for future shows on Twitter, on Instagram, so on and so forth. And I'll be in the comments on this video for the first couple hours. So come at me, bro. Like the channel, subscribe with notifications on. Check out one of these great videos on screen right now by Euro Football Daily or Football Daily. And I'll catch you next time, you dirty dogs.